In the second part of this lecture, we address the concept of magnetic circuits. We know that in electric circuits, you usually have a voltage source, you have resistance, resistance, uh, or a number of resistances configured in parallel, series, whatever the configuration may be, and the, this voltage source will supply current. Um, in the same way for a magnetic circuit, we know in, in some circuits, in some circuits we can write that, uh, we, we have here, for example, number of uh, number of turns, and there is a current going through them. We know from Ampere's law that the integral of h dot dl is equal to the current enclosed, which is equal to ni here in this case. And we say that this ni is what we call magnetomotive force. So V is an electromotive force, electric motive force, or electromotive force, and here corresponds to that magnetomotive force, which, which is this term, which is really equal to ni. In the same way, this electromotive force creates current, this magnetomotive force will create flux. So the flux is analogous to the current. In the same way that there are resistance that limits the value of current, the material from which that core is made will try to resist the flux, will try to limit the flux. And the, we have now, we can define another term we call the reluctance, magnetic reluctance. So there is a very good analogy between um, electric circuits and magnetic circuits in some cases. And this can help us to simplify the analysis of many of, of these circuits. So to put the analogy together, we, we put different quantities. In electric circuits, we have conductivity. In magnetic circuits, we have permeability. In electric circuits, we have electric field, which is in volt per meter. In magnetic circuits, we have magnetic field, which is ampere per meter. In electric circuits, if you want to get the current through a certain service, you integrate J dot dS over that service. In, in magnetic circuits, if you want to get the flux, you integrate B dot dS. You can see here the flux corresponds to the current. Psi corresponds to the current. Uh, if we have a uniform current, we can say that the current density is nothing but the current defined by the area, or is equal to the conductivity multiplied by the electric field. In the same way we have it here, if, if, uh, if the magnetic flux is uniform, we say that the magnetic flux density is equal to the magnetic flux, so this is Weber's per meter squared, is equal, uh, it's equal to magnetic flux which is in Weber's, divided by the area, meter squared. Our B is equal to mu H, you can see that mu corresponds to sigma here. We talk in electric circuits about electromotive force, we call it voltage, it, another, another name of it is electromotive force. In magnetic circuits, we talk about magnetomotive force, and they give it this symbol here, uh, which is really equal to Ni, number of turns multiplying the current, or is equal to HL, and the HL is the average, uh, where L is the average uh, contour around your magnetic circuit. Uh, we have here a resistance R that limits the current, we have here reluctance R that limits the flux. So there is a very good analogy between electric circuits and magnetic circuits. In electric circuits, we utilize Ampere's law. Ampere's law is saying that the resistance is the ratio between the voltage and the current. The resistance is what limits the current, so R is equal to V over I. And we know that if you have a certain resistor, uh, it has a certain lens uh, L, it has a cross-section area S, it's made of conductivity sigma. We said that the corresponding resistance is equal to L over sigma S. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the same thing applies here. We, we define the reluctance. Reluctance is the ratio between the magnetomotive force and the flux, magnetic flux. Remember, magnetic flux plays the same role as current. Magnetomotive force plays the same role as voltage. So V over I will give a resistance here, resistance called the reluctance. Now we know that this term here, the magnetomotive force, uh, is another way of writing it, is HL, where L is the average contour around your, your magnetic circuit, and it's also equal to Ni, if you know I, N is the number of turns. So I can replace this one by HL, I can re replace Psi by BS, and B is nothing but mu HS. So H will cancel, and you get that reluctance is equal to L over mu S. You can see S is the same, mu is analogous to sigma, the length is the same. 
So now this is how we define the reluctance. It's a very important expression. It is used over and over again. So a reluctance of a, of a, of a piece of, of, a, uh, of a rod or some piece of a magnetic circuit is equal to the average length divided by, divided by the permeability divided by the area. Now we know also that V in an electric circuit is equal to IR or e if the field is uniform is equal to E multiplied by the length. This is volt per meter, you multiply by meter, you get volts. The same thing is happening here. We know that the magnetomotive force is equal to HL and it is also from this expression is equal to Epsi R because Epsi we agreed plays the same role of current and the reluctance plays the same role of the resistance and another, another way of writing the magnetomotive force that is equal to NI we can apply in the electric circuit uh, Kirchhoff flow when we have a number of currents flowing in or out from a circuit we can say that the sum of the currents flowing out from that circuit are equal to zero the same thing can, can happen in a magnetic circuit so when you have say something like this you have flux flowing in, you have flux flowing in, you have flux flowing out. Then the total flux must be equal to zero, which is simply saying that the flux flowing in must be equal to flux flowing out. Again, flux, magnetic flux play the same role as current. In a, a Kirchhoff uh, voltage law, saying that the sum of the voltage sources are around the loop minus the sum of uh, IR for every branch is equal to zero. The same thing is happening here again for magnetic circuits. The sum of the magnetomotive forces, these are your sources, coils or whatever, uh, will be equal to the summation of Epsi multiplied by the reluctance. So there is really an equivalent uh, magnetic voltage drop across every element in your circuit. So this is, this is really pretty much all, all the terms that we need to know about magnetic circuits. And I will start now to show you some examples how to apply this analogy between magnetic circuits and electric circuits. We have first this example. We have a toroid, um, and uh, we, um, uh, there, is, there is a number of turns here. There is a current I going through this number of turns. Um, it's, it has circular cross section. The radius is 19.55 millimeters. The average length, and this average length is really the length going through the center. We use it over and over again here, 300 millimeters, to, so it is 30 centimeters, or 0.3 meters. Uh, it has 100 turns, there is 100 turns here, and uh, there is a flux going through inside this toroid of 1.55 millibars, uh, millibars, and uh, we would like here to calculate the current. And we are told that the material from which this core is made satisfies this a BH relationship. So it's not a linear material, it's not linear material. So when the magnetic field is equal to 200 amperes per meter, you get B is equal here to one, uh, uh, one Webers per meter squared. When it is 700 amperes per meter, you get that the magnetic field is equal to 1.3 um, uh, Webers per meter squared. So now I would like to calculate the current. Uh, well, we are giving the flux and we are giving the cross section area, then we know what is B. And if I know B, I can go to that curve and find H. And if I know H, and I know the average contour around the circle, the circuit, then I know the magnetic motive force, magnetomotive force equal to HL. And magnetomotive force is also equal to NI, and then I can solve for I. So this is a way of solving this problem. From the flux, I will get the flux density B. From the flux density B and from the curve, I will get H. And from H, I will uh, calculate the magnetomotive force, and then I will divide it by N to get the current. So, as I explained earlier, we get the mag magnetic flux density here by dividing the magnetic flux by the area. It is circular area, so the area is by multiplied by R squared. It is 19.5 uh, millimeters, so 0 0.0195 squared here. And this is 1.55 milli, milli Webers. So this will give you 1.297 Tesla. 1.297 Tesla is approximately 1.3 Tesla. So H from the curve we had earlier will be 700 ampere per meter. But we know for such a magnetic circuit and by applying Ampere's law, 
um, the integral of h dot uh, the h dot dl is equal to the magnetomotive force is equal to the current enclosed equal to ni. I know l the average length is given it is 300 millimeters or 0.3 meters. H already we calculated from the curve it's 700. Number of turns equal to 100. So when you divide all this you get that the current is equal to 2.1 meters. So this example is a very simple way of showing that the magnetomotive force has two two expressions and I can use one of them to calculate one of the unknowns. And of course here the material is nonlinear so we had to calculate H through the curve. We consider one more example here we have a magnetic circuit. Um, it looks like that. It looks like a rectangle work section. Of course, it has a thickness in the third dimension. Um, and there are a number of turns here, got current going through them. So these turns create a magnetomotive force. It looks like a voltage source. It's pushing flux in the circuit. Flux will be the same in the circuit because all elements here are in series. Um, and uh, we have an air gap here, a tiny air gap of 0.6 centimeters. So this is a tiny air gap, but but all the rest of the of the material here is uh, is a ferromagnetic material with mu r equal to fifteen hundred. The cross section is uh, square, so I'm just showing you one side, but it it has a cross section. It has a cross section of two centimeters squared. So if this this width is one centimeter, so the thickness in the other dimension is two centimeters. Uh, we had two southern turns here. The current is ten amperes would like to calculate the reluctance for the air gap and for the magnetic core that we have would like to calculate the magneto uh, magnetomotive force uh, for the core for the core and for the air gap and would like to calculate the flux in the circuit of course the flux in the circuit is the same because you are uh, in series here So in this circuit, just before I proceed, the, we have first to start by drawing an equivalent circuit. This looks like a voltage source because this is what creates the, uh, the, uh, the excitation. Uh, whole, all this core looks like one resistance. I can calculate its reluctance um, by calculating the total length. The total length all around here. So it's going to be 12 plus 10 plus 12 plus 10 minus 0.6. So it's going to be 43.4 centimeters. And I can calculate the reluctance of the air gap because I have its length is 0.6 only and I know it's a cross section. And once I have these two reluctances, I can solve for everything else. So the equivalent circuit of this uh, magnetic circuit here is really uh, a, looks like a voltage source, the reluctance of the uh, core and the reluctance of the air gap, the R in series. There is the same, the same epsi, the same flux is flowing in the circuit. Now, what is the value of the magnetomotive force? We are given that the current is 10, we have 2,000 turns, then the magnetomotive force is 2,000 multiplied by 10, so it's 2 multiplied to the power 4 amperes, but when you multiply by turns, sometimes they refer to that as ampere turn. Now, to calculate the reluctances of the, the, of the magnetic core, we need its length, we need its cross-section, we need its material, its permeability. Its length I already indicated that's equal to the sum of all the sides and you subtract from that 0 0.6 for the air gap, so you get 43.4 centimeters. So 43.4 times the minus 2. Mu for this one is mu r multiplied by mu naught, so 1500 multiplied by 4 by the minus 7. The so cross-section area is 2 centimeters squared, so you multiply two, so you divide by two tens to the minus four. If you if you simplify all this together, you'll see that the reluctance of the core is 0 0.115 10 to the seven ampere turn per meter. These are this is the units of this of this reluctance term. So it's a, it's it's a fraction of 10 to the power seven. Now we move to calculate the reluctance of the air gap. We calculate the reluctance of the air gap in the same way. Its length is only 0 0.6 centimeters, 0 0.6 times the minus 2. Its permeability is that of air, so it's mu naught, 4 by 10 to the minus 7. Its cross section area is 10 to the minus 4, uh, 2 10 to the minus 4, as in the previous case. If you simplify all this, you get, you get a way bigger number. So this is saying that the air gap represents more, more resistance to the flow of flux in the circuit. The other one was 0 0.15. 
This one is 2.387 tons of R7 and per turn per meter. Now, the total reluctance of the circuit, we can sum these reluctances to get the total reluctance is it will be equal to 2.387 plus 0.115, so you get 2.502 to the power 7 ampere turn per meter. The, uh, the, the magnetic flux density here in this case, of course we already got the two reluctances, we, get, we need the magnetic flux density, Magne uh, or magnetic flux. Magnetic flux, by definition, it's, it's like current, it's the current. So this is the current, this is your, your voltage, and this is your resistance. So the current is equal to the voltage divided by the total resistance because this is, looks like one circuit in parallel. So I already calculated the, uh, the, this one here. Um, it's, it's equal to Ni, so 2,000 turns by 10 ampere, so it's equal to 2 tens of power 4. We divide by the total reluctance we calculated, and this will give us a flux um, of um, 8 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4 Webers, and of course there is no meter squared because this flux is not flux density. It should be in Weber's, 8 to the minus 4 um, Weber's. Now, if you want to get, now, this, this total, total magnetomotive force is like a voltage, voltage source. Part of it will appear as a drop across the air gap. Part of it will appear as a drop across the core. So, we can apply the, uh, the voltage division expression we use for electric circuits. So, the magnetomotive force across the gap is equal to the reluctance of the gap divided by the reluctance of the gap plus the reluctance of the core. And of course, the reluctance of the gap is way bigger, so this is why when you divide them 2.387 by the total reluctance, 2.502, and then you multiply by, by the magnetomotive force 2 to the 10 to the power 4, you will see that it will take most of it. It becomes 19.081 um, uh, ampere turn here. The last thing we need to calculate is to calculate the, uh, the, the uh, magnetomotive force across the core and the core here represents a low resistance, represents low resistance to flux. And this is why when you apply the uh, division rule and again you have to multiply by the total magnetomotive force which is missing here. So you'll see that uh, you, you, you again you use a voltage division expression. This is the reluctance of the core divided by the reluctance of the core plus the reluctance of the air gap and then you multiply by the uh, total magnetomotive force, 2 tens of R4. This is one, this one is very small relative to the reluctance of the gap. So this is why here uh, the, uh, the magnetomotive force across the core is, is a fraction of, the, of that of the gap. So this is exactly what we have in the electric circuit, where a big resistance, like the one that the gap represents, will take most of the voltage drop. And the voltage drop here is really the magnetomotive force.